gout. It is a disease of the purine metabolism. As we know the basic biochemistry, uric acid is produced from the purine breakdown. Now in gout, there is excess of monosodium urate crystals. MSU stands for monosodium urate. These crystals are deposited and the most common joint involved is great toe. And the joint is very, very painful, hot, tender. That is, it's a inflamed. It's a type of inflammation. Excruciatively tender. And it classically occurs in males in the age of 20 to 40 years. Pain usually occurs at night. Well, second common joint involved is ankle joint. Otherwise, it can involve knee and other joint also. But as I told you, most common joint is great toe joints. Not only it can lead to joint pains, it can also lead to uric acid stones. It can also lead to interstitial nephritis. can also lead to soft tissue mass, so-called TOFI. Soft tissue swellings or mass, TOFI. Now, as far as increased uric acid may or may not be there. A patient of very high amount of uric acid, serum uric acid, may be asymptomatic and at time severe gout can occur with the normal or slightly raised serum uric acid. Now let us see how, what are the causes of gout. First of all, it can be under secretor of uric acid. This could be idiopathic. Renal failure, especially chronic renal failure, it can be in hypothyroid, it could be hyper parathyroid, it could be diuretic. It could be alcohol. Okay. Then salicylates, aspirin to be more precise. They are some of the cause of 
under secretion of uric acid in the urine. Now there are certain overproduction of uric acid. In the overproduction of uric acid, myeloproliferative disorders, that is, and lymphoproliferative disorders, all, all, or any leukemia. psoriasis in short anything which lead to increased turnover is of the self can lead to a uh, high amount of uric acid but one important negative point you should remember in any hemolytic anemia in any hemolytic anemia Although RBC turnover is very high, but it does not lead to high uric acid because RBC do not contain any nucleus, so there is no purine in that way. This is a very, very frequently asked viva and MCQ question also. Okay? So these are the, some of the causes that we talk about. So in a quick revision of the problem, what can happen is acute gout, interstitial nephritis, stones, and tophi. Now, what is the best initial test? Is uric acid level in the serum uric acid is the best initial test. But remember, most confirmatory test for gout is you aspirate the synovial fluid and you look for needle shaped crystals in the polarizing microscope and what we get negatively by Ref nightly by refrigerant crystals under the polarizing microscope. This is the most accurate or most confirmatory or you can say most accurate test. Point to be noted in even in acute gout, serum uric acid level may be normal. And one more thing. Abrupt fall of uric acid, serum uric acid is more common cause of acute guide than the abrupt rise of uric acid. Point to be noted, sudden abrupt fall of serum uric acid is more common cause of acute gout as compared to abrupt rise of serum uric acid in uric acid. That's why in, in acute gout, we never give allopurinol. It is contraindicated in acute gout. Okay. What else? Other things are ESR is raised. Total leukocyte count is raised because of it's a type of inflammatory disorders. Now, in X ray, in X ray, you get punch out lesion with over hanging margin now how to manage the case of gout 
acute gout. Drug of choice is ansiet. Normally we give indomethacine. But aspirin is contraindicated, the reason being it reduces uric acid excretion. That's why indomethacine the drug of choice. We can also use colchicine. But it has a side effect of it can lead to side effect is it lead to diarrhea. In severe pain, not being controlled by colchicine or aspirin, then we can even inject steroids, intra-articular, not artery, in the joint, I is for articular, in the inflamed joint, we can even inject steroids. This for acute. But for chronic cases, we give allopurinol. This is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor, so it, it reduces uric acid formation. For under secretors, we give uricose, uric drug. Now, what is the definition of under secreta? Uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what is the definition of overproducing? Now, overproducing are those people who are producing more than 800 milligram of uric acid per day. And under are those who are secreting less than 800 milligram of uric acid per day. That the definition of under secretor. So in under secretor we give uricose, uric drug like probenecid. Sulfinparazone. Okay. In under secretors. But point to be noted. These drugs should not be given in the over producers. These are the traditional drugs that we are using for acute and chronic cases. Now let's talk about newer drugs for gout. The new drugs are now recent advances, recent advances. First is Benz Bro Maron. This is a new uricose uric drug. Then we have Fabrixostat. This is the new xanthine oxidase inhibitor. Then we have Rasburicase. This is the purine. Normally it is converted into uric acid. Now rasburicase does not allow this reaction. It convert purine into allantois. Allantois is a water soluble compound goes out of the body. And then we have drugs like losartan.
एम्लोडिपीन फिनोफाइब्रेट दीज आर द थ्री डक्स the old duct that we have been using for hypertension and for hyperlipidemia the three ducts which also have uricose uric action okay so they are the all the latest duct that we have with us and they are the one what examiner is going to ask you in recent exam remember examiner always want to know the latest drugs from you now a small homework for all of you all diuretics can increase uric acid level that's why all diuretics are contraindicated in gout only except one what is the name of that drug so homework for you the question is which diuretic can be given in gout you send this uh, answer on my messenger okay this is homework for you and last time also i told you that if you want to talk to me directly you join our dr bhatia forum by messenger okay so in that way we can directly interaction with we can interact with each other directly also thank you very much for watching this video stay tuned in future for more videos on the pipeline thank you very much.